So in this video, we'll talk about what is spine surgery, what is minimally invasive spine surgery, how can we achieve the same goals of traditional spine surgery through small incisions and do a complete job. Do watch this video till the end. Before we start, we need to know what are the challenges of spine surgery. Spine is a complex anatomical structure. It is surrounded by very sensitive structures like big blood vessels which are lying anterior to the spine and neurological elements which are passing through the spine. And when the surgeon operates, he needs to be careful in not damaging these structures. And this is why in traditional spine surgeries, long incisions have been used to better visualize all these anatomical structures. Apart from this, there are wide variety of spinal conditions that the patient presents to the surgeon with. There can be lumbar canal stenosis, there can be disc herniation, spinal tumors, facet joint pain, other causes of pain in the spine, trauma to the spine, fractures in the spine, osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures and a whole lot of conditions that make it necessary for a surgeon to operate upon the spine. When we are doing surgery on the spine, there is a big chance of neurological complications if we are not doing the job properly. When we are operating the spine, we are in very close relationship to the neurological structures. And because of this, if there is any sort of damage to these neurological structures, patient may have a bad outcome and may even be paralyzed. Then in spine surgeries, we use a lot of instrumentation such as pedicle screws and rods which are used to stabilize and fix the spine. All these make the spine surgery more complex and there are more chances of infection if we are doing big traditional surgeries with big scars where a lot of tissue dissection has to take place. With increasing lifespan, these days patients are presenting in advanced age elderly patients which have a lot of comorbid conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes mellitus, poor heart condition, poor respiratory conditions, their lungs are weak, their hearts are weak but they are suffering from spinal conditions and because of these uh, there is a very big problem in uh, putting these patients under a lot of surgical stress of general anesthesia and a lot of these patients may require even ICU care. So all these factors when considered together make spine surgery a very challenging and a very difficult task. So now let us see how full spine surgery is done. When we talk about full spine surgery which is done in the traditional way, first the patient is prepared for surgery, he is giving general anesthesia, he is made lie on his stomach on the operation table and patient is cleaned and clean drapes are placed or around the patient. Then the level on which the surgery has to be done is determined by intraoperative x-ray which is called a CR. Then a big incision is given to expose the spine fully so that without damaging the nearby structures all the surgeon can operate at the required level. Exposing the spine often requires big incisions with a lot of tissue dissection, a lot of blood loss and a lot of unnecessary damage to the local surrounding muscles just to reach the region of interest in the spine where the surgeon wants to operate. After this, the bone is cut to expose the spinal cord. After exposing the bone, the spinal cord is to be exposed. This is done by cutting the bone which is overlying the spinal cord which is called the lamina. The lamina of the vertebral bone is cut and the spinal cord is now visible to the surgeon. Very carefully, now the surgeon can take care of the pathology, whether it is a disc prolapse or a tumor uh, or any other thing which needs to be operated upon. And then after this, if he needs to stabilize the spine, some screws are placed in the vertebral body or the bones of the spine and then they are connected with a rod so that the spine can be made stable. After this, the muscles are closed and the skin is closed and finally the stitches are placed on the skin. After this, the wound is dressed and the patient is then again made to turn and lie on his back and then the general anesthesia is reversed. It has been a very big operation. The patient may need to be shifted to the intensive care unit or the ICU. So what are the conditions in which spine surgery is required? There can be spinal deformity which is called scoliosis or kyphosis or there can be tumor in the spine, there can be a vertebral fracture due to a trauma or due to an osteoporosis where the bones become weak, especially seen in the elderly. There may be a disc prolapse which may be pinching the nerves and causing pain to radiate from the back to the legs and host of other conditions which may necessitate the surgeon to operate upon the spine.
Hi, I am Dr. Varun Agarwal. I am a robotic and endoscopic spine surgery specialist. I have trained in Switzerland and to operate upon the spine with a minimal invasive approach using all these advanced technologies like the spine endoscope, a spine robot and OAN 3D navigation to do spine surgeries with a very small incision and for quick recovery and early discharge and early rehabilitation of the patient. Now let us see if all these conditions can be treated with minimally invasive approach. Nowadays with advanced technologies such as the spine endoscope, the robot and OAM 3D navigation, all these surgeries can now be done with a very small incision and to reach the pathology and do a complete surgery with minimum of incision and minimum of surgical stress to the patient. However, it must be stressed that not all pathologies of the spine can be treated with MISS or minimally invasive spine surgery or spine endoscopy. But with advanced technology such as the spine robot, the spine endoscope and OAM 3D navigation, we are able to treat a majority of these conditions with the help of minimally invasive spine surgery and give better outcomes than the traditional surgery. So what are the conditions that can be treated with a minimally invasive approach when we talk about spine surgery? Most of the pathologies, disc prolapse which is pinching the nerve, a small spine tumor, vertebral fractures maybe due to trauma or maybe due to osteoporosis or even some suitable spine deformities can all be addressed with a minimally invasive spine surgery approach. Hi, I am Dr. Varun Agarwal, robotic and endoscopic spine specialist. I bring you the latest information in back pain and spine surgery. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and click the bell button. How far have incision lengths decreased in spine surgery? With the help of these latest techniques such as spine robotics and endoscopy, incisions have really reduced to a very small site from up to a few centimeters to even a few millimeters. With the help of an endoscope, we can do surgery even of the incision size is less than the tip of my little finger. With MISS, we can do surgery with from 10 millimeter to up to 20 millimeters of incision. The patient just gets small incisions on the back through which these advanced instruments are introduced and the pathology which is to be operated upon is operated inside the body. So what are the advantages of minimally invasive spine surgery? When we talk about minimally invasive spine surgery, we give very small incisions on the patient's back through which advanced instruments such as the spine endoscope, the tube retractor system or a spine robot is used to insert the instruments inside the patient's body and do in detail the surgery at the required area without damaging the entire surrounding structures. Like I have mentioned before, in traditional spine surgery, just to expose the spine, we are forced to remove a whole lot of healthy tissue just to reach the required area. With the help of OAM 3D navigation and robotics, we are able to precisely localize even before giving the incision where the pathology is and we directly approach that pathology through a very small incision on the back which may be even as small as my, the tip of my little finger or up to 8 to 10 millimeter. Once we have localized the pathology in the spine, we give a small stab incision on the back which is up to 10 millimeter to 8 millimeters through which these instruments are introduced and spine surgery is then done. The advantage of using all these techniques is that a lot of normal tissue which otherwise in traditional surgery has to be damaged to reach the exact area where the surgeon wants to operate, all that is not done. We just split the muscle rather than remove the muscle over the back uh, which is attached to the bone and just reach the pathology directly. Because of this, there is lot less tissue damage, very small incisions, healing time is remarkably shortened. Patient can even be sent home by evening because the recovery time is very less. There is very less bleeding. Patients sometimes don't even have to arrange post-operative blood they may not need even icu care and this is a truly outpatient procedure wherein because of this less trauma to the normal tissues the patient can be mobilized really fast and even post-operative and chronic back pain which is related to normal tissue damage which has to be done in the traditional spine surgery since the normal tissue is preserved as much as possible in MISS, post-operative pain is much, much less. Patients need the latest and most credible information. I, Dr. Varun Agarwal, endoscopic and robotic spine specialist, bring you the latest and the most credible information 
in spine surgery and low back pain please don't forget to like and subscribe the channel and hit the bell button so what is unique in minimally invasive spine surgery the surgery is done with the help of very small incisions from 8 mm up to even a couple of centimeters there is less tissue trauma less blood loss less post operative pain patient is mobilized as soon as possible even by the same evening of surgery may not need icu care or intensive nursing care and they go, go back home and go back to their day to day activities even by next day morning there is less risk of complications less chances of infection and less post operative and long term pain as most of the normal structures are not damaged and like in traditional surgery to conclude minimally invasive spine surgery indeed is better nobody wants a big scar on their back they want to go home as early as possible they want to go to their work to their loved ones to their family and do their day to day activities as soon as possible and with these advanced techniques of miss or minimally invasive spine surgery this is now indeed becoming a reality but only a skilled minimally invasive spine surgeon can decide whether your problem or whether your disease is suitable for these kind of techniques so as a patient you should indeed prefer minimally invasive spine surgery and yes don't forget to check out these videos